Hello, this is Gage, your host, and... And this is Bodie, your co-host and editor. And you're listening to The Musical Underworld, where we are going to interview Paige Hamilton from Helmet This is today. a podcast. Yeah. Well, a non-live podcast. Yeah. We are recording this on Thursday, June 18th of 2020. I am a preteen... I am 12, almost 13. He is 13. I am 13. Yes. And As and you can see, quarantine has driven us to yes. um, do drastic things. Today we're going to be interviewing Paige Hamilton of Helmet. Yes. And it took us about two weeks to get a hold of him. Well, not to get a hold not, of him. Not to get a hold of him. Just but to get an interview. Yeah. But. He, so, did. if you guys don't like this. If you like this, then uh, press the like button. And tell us why you liked it. Yes. And if you didn't like it, press the dislike button. Tell us why you didn't like it in the comments. Yes. Don't don't hide away. Tell us why you d- didn't like it in the comments. Okay, we need to know. Ro- like yeah. constructive c- criticism is like yeah. the best thing you could ever give something someone. Page. Like if I if I had a birthday present, anytime I'd be, be like, well, okay. What did I do wrong this year? <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. In around, I'd say five, three minutes, uh, Paige Hamilton should be able to call us. Yep, we gave him a number to call, and it's 2.58 right now. So. so, you know, I have a stutter. Yeah. Um. So, this is a little backstory on us. Gage, hmm? take it away. Oh. What do I do? Backstory. Oh, backstory. Backstory, bro. Backstory on Helmet? No, backstory on you. Oh, backstory on me. Bro. So, I was born in Arizona in 2006, and I don't know. I just did a bunch of things after that. That's um one of the best descriptions I've ever gotten Yeah. of someone's life. <laughs> um, I'm Bodhi. I was born in Sacramento, California. Um, I went through a lot. I went through foster care for around a year and a half. We gotta open the list of questions. Yeah, I know. And we're gonna try our best to have an actual human conversation with Paige. This is, uh, so, you know, I'm going to try to do at least, the least amount of edits as possible. Very sorry for the long intro. We decided to start recording before 3 o'clock. Yep. Which is when we scheduled the interview. I need to get sponsored by PC. Yeah. This is, like, really good. <laughs> Hashtag non-sponsored. Please sponsor me. <laughs> um, we both have channels. I don't know where Gage's channel is. Somewhere in the... Mine's in musical. Mine's just musical underworld, this channel. No, you ha- you have a channel. Oh, yeah. I have, yeah. My, I have my own, but I don't but have anything on it. Exactly, but the thing is, like, I actually... I actually couldn't. Oh. I actually couldn't ever find it. It's three o'clock. Any second now. I actually couldn't ever find it. <laughs> w- w- wait, w- if he lives like in Manhattan, then like it, 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 it was gonna be like six o'clock. No. Nah. It's gonna be like six o'clock where we are. <laughs> nah, he told. Or, or, or like. He told us where he was calling from. Oh, I... All right. Any second now. I might just do no edits on this. <laughs> yeah. See what mistakes we could come up with. This is our first interview too. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. We should have like a uh, we should have like a separate uh, version of our channel for m- the for the mistake moments. Oh. And we should like have people criticize it. Yeah. Oh, that would be like epic. Oh, yeah. let's go. Oh, that was so cringy. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> did, you just, did you just see the whip? Did you see the whip? That's old. Bro, I honestly, I don't, I don't know what I did. Yeah, stop being so nervous. Stop being so nervous. Why? Because it's, this is Paige just, Hamilton. Yeah, there's it's, it's not it's no reason to get get nervous. You think that like people on their first interviews? Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> you uh, think people on their first interviews are nervous? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, where's the zoom button? What zoom button? Zoom. Can you not see zoom? it? Zoom. 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 
Zoom. Not Zoom is in the uh No. <sighs> the the app the for meetings. Uh we are both musicians. Yeah. We are We're in a band actually. Yeah, we're in a band. Uh we're probably gonna feature our band in some of these. Um We've made this intro like um, three minutes long. We should probably edit some of this I, out. I know. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to yeah. edit most of this out. Edit most of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to edit most of it out, and mo and I'm going to edit as clean as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Fil Fillmore Nine. I don't know what that is. Fillmore Nine is an editing software. Oh, all right. Ready? Yep. Hello. Uh, hey, is that Gage? Yes. It is. Alright. Is this Paige Hamilton? Hey. Yep. Yeah, we have a three o'clock uh, dinner for you, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Cool, man. Yeah. So, um, how are you today? Uh, you know, hanging in. Uh, yeah. Uh, Qu quarantine must be rough. Be <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, this is my co host, Bodie. What's up? Turn the volume up a little bit. Alright. Alright, so. So, what have you been doing to pass the time during quarantine? Uh, I have a. a I've been working on a movie. I have a movie that I'm scoring called Painted Beauty. Um, and that's kind of uh, winding down here. Uh, and then I've, I've been working on um, a jazz uh, you know, album, doing working on jazz tunes. I'm going to do that sometime in. This year or early next year, I'll probably record it. I'm about to start um, uh, writing a helmet album. Ooh. Why? It's gonna be once I finish the movie. Yeah. Uh, once the movie once the movie theater is open, I'll make sure to try to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, if it gets a theatrical release, we don't yeah. know. Independent movies, you, you never know. So. Yeah. We'll probably try to find it though. So. We're definitely releasing, or uh, we're releasing the soundtrack. So keep your eye out for that. That's All right. Beauty. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool music. Yeah. Also, I was wondering if you started playing metal music or jazz music first. Um. Uh, well, I started playing rock. Um, oh. Led, Led Zeppelin was my first inspiration, and uh, Jimmy Page is uh, the, the person that made me want to play guitar. So that's. I had a teacher in Medford uh, who huh. would, would, wouldn't teach me um, Stairway to Heaven because it was quote unquote too difficult. So I fired <laughs> him and I got another teacher. And um, yeah, and then that guy kind of turned me, turned me on to jazz. So I went from Led Zeppelin into jazz and sort of there were sort of parallels and developed in a parallel way. You know how there's like hybrid drummers? Like there's hybrid drummers between rock and jazz. Like I, I, I feel like, are you a hybrid guitarist? Yeah, I mean hybrids. I, I never heard it described like that. I play, um, um, you know, helmets. My been my main thing for thirty years. Uh, but I also have a master's degree in jazz guitar. Oh. From Manhattan School of Music in New York City. So I've always been interested in both. Um, and uh, I was lucky that I got turned on to jazz at a young age so uh i've kind of been at it for a long long time and it's a really fun thing a lot of guys um that were my heroes bands uh rock mm -hmm. bands like john bonham and jimmy page those guys like jazz um and a lot of the soul soul bands like marvin gay and yeah. Al green they all like like jazz so it was kind of um it's, it's less common now i guess for guys in metal bands to, uh, to dig jazz, but yeah, I've always loved it. I actually never realized that. Yeah, John Bonham was a huge fan of Chico Hamilton, who played with one of my guitar heroes, Jim Hall. Um, oh. And John Dens John Densmore from The Doors, he, he saw John Coltrane play many times in Los Angeles as a kid. Um, and those, yeah, so that mu music's intertwined. And the drum kit was actually uh, invented by a guy, uh, a jazz guy, because um, it used to be one guy would play the kick drum with the um, with the mallet.
talent. One guy would play the snare drum. One guy would play the cymbals. Yeah, that would be so, like, yeah, like like a marching yeah, band. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then, and then they combined it. it. No sense. Yeah, combined it for so you could play these polyrhythmic stuff in, in jazz, and there you go. It just kind of developed from there. What? Well, that's it's real interesting. Um, what was your initial reaction when your when the first Helm album sold like forty thousand copies? The first, you mean Strap It On? Yeah, that one. Or, uh, yep. The first, Strap It On. Yeah. Um, yeah, Strap It On. Um, yeah, I don't know that it sold that well. Uh, it was on an indie label, and it went out of print because that the distributor went out of business. Uh, but the, but the band. Um, the band was doing really well live and that's when we signed the major label deal and Meantime, uh, put out Meantime and that sold like a million copies and that, uh, so that was uh, pretty sh- surprising to us because we're not a, a mainstream uh, sounding band especially at the time in 1992 nobody was they said we were too heavy for Saturday Night Live and uh, Letterman and stuff um, and then you know like not two years later heavy bands were playing those shows so it was uh, we were, it was, our music was kind of, um, sounded different for people at the time, I think. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, it's really good to have unique music every now and then, like, cause like, yeah. it, no matter, like, for me, like, I don't really care if like, the music is, like, um, I don't really care if like, the music is, like, good or not, like, sometimes uh, I just need, like, something unique, like, Something that I've never yeah. heard before. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's yeah, that was nice. two, that was two questions in one. Uh, that was two questions in one. Yeah. Uh. All right. So. Yeah. No problem. All right. I was wondering if you were expecting to write like a massive '90s radio hit when you wrote "Unsung." No. No, I just um, I just was trying to write, you know, stuff that we that we in the band liked, you know, and uh. I got, um, can't remember how I even came up with that riff. I remember where I was when I wrote the song. I lived in on, on uh, 10th Street and uh, Avenue C in the East Village and uh, had a little room facing an air shaft. Um, you know, coming from Oregon to New York was, a, you know, eye-opening, but I loved it because uh, it was so different. But, um, yeah, I didn't think, I, didn't, I never write anything um, thinking about what the response is going to be. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the audience or somebody thinking it's a it's a hit because I just I didn't get into music for that. I got into music to do what I love, and uh, we just been fortunate that you know people like the um, like the music, and I think if you do something unique um, and it stands out, people will will appreciate it. Not that you know not ten million people, but a million people, you know, and that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, so for the meantime tour, I'm pretty sure it was like the biggest tour that you've ever been on. Uh, you traveled like the entire, almost the entire planet. Um, you guys toured through the United States, Brazil, Europe, Asia. How did the traveling go? How's it, how's traveling? Go? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, well, I mean, we, you know, we don't set any of that up. I mean, the band uh, has a has a booking agent and a manager and a travel agent, and then we have a tour manager. So um, they just basically we work this stuff out. Um, you know, they work out, they book the shows, and then they're like, okay, we have thirty shows in Europe. Uh, we have Australia, New Zealand, Japan. We have Brazil, um, whatever. Um, and then, and so then we just show you just show up you know um, you show up at the airport and fly uh, and you know depending on where we're going uh, like it, since we go to Europe a lot we have a, we have a, a home base in Europe which is in the Czech Republic in Prague so we have gear um, a gear and a rehearsal space over there that we use because um, it's very expensive to ship uh, gear you know, and like if we're doing fly dates like in South America, we have that coming up in October. If if it doesn't get canceled, um, we, we j- 
just rent gear. We'll rent like Marshall amps and take our guitars and pedal boards. Um, and, and, you know, Kyle's drums will be rented or whatever. But uh, for Europe and the U.S., we have separate rigs um, for both places. Uh, and then, yeah, that's it. Kind of just the shows get set up, and we get, we have a uh, kind of schedule every day. So you wake up and try to eat some food and coffee, and then you have a sound check and dinner and a nap, and then you go on stage and rock, and then you get in the bus and you drive to the next town. That seems pretty smooth. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a great way to live if if you like to travel, which I do. So I love it. I love doing it. Uh, I'm really missing it right now because everything's been, yeah. you know, canceled. Yeah. But at least you got to do your 30th anniversary tour before all this started. Yeah, we were <laughs> lucky with that. The, uh, Australia, we were doing that in Australia, New Zealand, and Japan as well, and that's been uh, canceled, but we've rebooked it for November, so we, we, we're, we're unsure if it's going to happen or not. We don't know yet. Yeah, but like, what was it like playing 30 songs? for like every every night of the tour it was a bit daunting at first uh but after we kind of got uh the, got in the groove um first show was in Prague, and then we played berlin those shows were a little rougher um uh and seemed kind of overwhelming but once i kind of figured out a set flow and i would i would alternate certain songs every night because um, we know probably 85 90 songs um we would uh, uh, we got in the groove and I loved it. Now short sets I, I think are gonna you know feel really short. So it's it's fun. It's fun knowing you have two hours to sing and play in front of people. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like I don't know how someone does that. Like, like I, I would not be able to do like thirty like songs a night. Not because of the knowledge part, but because of like the physical endurance part. Like, I think that, like, every single night, 30 songs over and over and over again. They played 45 in Medford. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That is... <laughs> yeah, um, it, um, a lot of my friends in bands said the same thing. I have friends in the, in, you know, in the, in the cult and, and, um, Guns N' Roses and, uh, my, my drummer buddy from Maroon 5, who used to be in my band, Gandhi, and they were like, you're playing... 30 songs and they're like you're insane oh my friend Chris from Bush who used to be in Helmet but um I loved I loved playing and I loved I loved every minute of it it was um I would I would do it again it was really fun um you have to be in shape you know I don't smoke cigarettes and I you know I don't do drugs and um I don't you know I have a few beers um but not I can't get drunk and play this kind of music um so it's just have to be kind of have your your stuff together you know um yeah i really respect like rock bands that don't like get caught up in drugs or like you know that kind of stuff yeah it's it's, it's not uncommon i mean it's it's uh it's, it's around it's always around and uh you just have to make up your mind um and i had a strict policy and helmet um way back it just said no, no drugs. We had a guy come over uh, from the crew of Soundgarden, and he, he was he had been on heroin, I guess, and he said he was clean. Uh, oh, but he came on tour with us, and he um, he did. He, I think he had a whatever some kind of seizure on the bus from shooting up or whatever it was. So I, I had to fire him, you know. And I, I, I was uh, I was bummed. I feel bad, but we're out there to, to do a job and can't be doing drugs um, and do a, do a job to the best. I mean, amazing bands have done tons of drugs, like Black Sabbath or mm -hmm. whatever, but um, you, you know, that was in a different time, in the you know, 60s and 70s, and um, and I think they would, if they had it to do again, maybe they wouldn't, I don't know. And I, you know, I, like, I, like I said, I'll, we'll have beers and stuff, and I'll have a couple of beers after the show, but I just, I, you know, I went through a period where I drank um, on stage about 10 years ago and I had too much and I felt terrible. I just felt like I didn't play good, didn't sing good. And, um, I just think it's better to, you know, if the music doesn't get you excited, then maybe you should do something else. All right. Um, 
So what did it feel like being the only original member recording the the size matters in in 2004? Yeah, um, that was interesting because the band had been having a hiatus for seven years, and uh, I moved to Los Angeles from New York, and um, I had started a band with my friend Johnny Tempesta, who used to be in uh, White Zombie and Rob Zombie, and now he plays in the Cult. And we didn't even we weren't doing Helmet. We were just and then the label president Jimmy Iovine phoned me one day and asked me to make a Helmet record. So I said sure, um, and. We, I already had. A, I said I have a band, and um, you know we were working with Lasco, who played with, played with Ozzy and stuff. And he he got he got the Ozzy gig right about that time, and he wanted to do both bands, uh, Helmet and Ozzy. And I just told him it's not possible because if Ozzy has a tour at the same time as us, it'll conflict. Then you're gonna you probably get paid more money from Ozzy than from me. So <laughs> so we just got a new bass player. Um, and uh, we had the band. We just—it was a really fun time. A lot of people in, uh, in Los Angeles. I didn't really realize how excited people were about Helmet because um, we had had seven years away, and everybody and their mother tried to be involved with the album um, in the studio. And people were—we had a lot of different engineers and mix, you know, people. And uh, and then and Jay Baumgartner ended up mixing and doing a great job. He's a good friend, and he mixed that to the world as well. So it was an interesting experience. And, like, how did you wrap your head around the reality of, like, being uh, being in a band for 30 years, even if, like, the lineup has changed a bunch? And... Yeah, I never, you know, I never thought about it. If someone had asked me in 1989, will you be doing this in 30 years, I would have laughed at them. Because um, it's such, as you guys you know, know, very physical music. Um, it takes a lot of energy on stage, but I uh, I love playing music. When I when I when the band was on a hiatus for those seven years, and I, I had great luck. I did some movies, you know, with um, they did that Al Pacino De Niro movie Heat, and I did a bunch of movies for the composer Elliot Goldenthal, and then I played guitar with David Bowie, which was amazing. But I kept missing Helmet. I just kept missing playing this music. So when I mean, I called and asked me to make a, a helmet record. It was it was exciting. I, I, I'm just really happy to be doing it, and I'll do it as long as I can. So, uh, but yes, I never thought I'd be doing it. You know, thirty years later. All right, that's that's really interesting. Um, let's see. We've had a lot of three in one uh, questions and two in one questions here. So that's, that's, I've, yeah, that's, that's a really, cool. really good way to use your time. Yeah, um, yeah that's cool, yeah. What was the best concert you've ever been to? Or, like, best, best band you've ever seen? I've ever been, been to. I would have to say there are two that come to mind immediately. Three. Uh, the first one would be uh, Talking Heads in Eugene, Oregon at... Uh, the Holton Center when they did the Stop Making Sense tour in 1980 or 81 maybe I think I forget um, and then we say the Kinks I saw the Kinks the first time I've seen them three times but I saw them in New York at uh, Jones Beach outdoors in the rain uh, and it was UB40 opening it was amazing and then I saw the um, Los Angeles Philharmonic um, about a year almost no more than a year ago I've seen them 20 times, but I saw them do Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, um, and that was the, one of the most crushing, incredible experiences of my life. So those three stand out, uh, you know, as the best. I've seen, like, Tool and Ghost. Ghost is kind of a newer band, and, like, I think those two uh, are yeah, the coolest for... concerts I've been to. Yeah, it, definitely oh. the cool Tool concert. I, I went to a Tool concert with, uh, with Gage before. And it was like, it was it was honestly insane uh, seeing those uh, those guys play. Yeah, they're, they're, I know Danny well, um, and I'm, I'm um, I, Maynard and um, Adam and I are acquainted. I haven't seen May, uh, Maynard for twenty years, but they open a tool open for Helmet, the second show they ever did in Los Angeles, in nineteen. 
that had to be 91 maybe something like that so that was like that was like when they uh that was like when they released the ep they're like first ep yeah the very first one yeah pretty sure it was like seven two six eight seven two eight two six seven two eight two six i actually know that (laughs) yeah yeah that's like one of the yeah that's long time ago yeah 91 they started not uh, I think they started like two years after us something like that hmm. alright uh so you guys recently you guys recently asked to cancel the Call of Faith No More in Corn. like do you, do you plan on rescheduling it or is it just like a, or is this uh, like a chance miss yeah we don't know um right now they, we haven't heard any any re um rebooked dates we have rebooked for helmet we rebooked australia new zealand and japan um we haven't rebooked this we we're supposed to be in europe um right about now and um the corn i just heard about the corn thing a couple of weeks ago um that it got canceled and they haven't rebooked we're we they rebooked um next may in los angeles we're playing at the football stadium with the system of a down oh and, the um, the the, the L.A. Rams team? I believe so, yeah. Right. I, I got some some bank bank or insurance name or something, I, something bank, you know, stadium or whatever. Um, so that's been rebooked for May, I think like 21 or 20, 21st, 22nd, or 22nd, 23rd, something like that. And then uh, I, 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 I hope they rebook the uh, corn Faith No More Helmet Tour. I really do. I was really looking forward to that because we've toured with both those bands um, in 92 and 97. Uh, 92 with Faith No More and 97 with Corn, and uh, really look for- was really looking forward to that. Good guys. Yeah. All right. I remember like the first time I heard a song by Faith No More. It was epic, I think. That was the song. Uh-huh. I-, I was playing a Guitar Hero game. And uh, I think my dad, oh. my dad played that song, and I just really oh, liked cool. it. Yeah, they're great, man, and they're they're really good guys. So we saw Pat um, Singer from Faith No More would be in December, like two years ago, when we were doing festival uh, a festival in, Ch- in Chile, in Sa- outside of Santiago, Chile, in South America. And that's the first time I'd seen him in years, and it was just great. It was Great to you know, great to see him. Like I'd seen him yesterday, and I saw the Corn guys a couple of years ago on a rock cruise that we did together, and um, that was cool too. Just to kind of, it's just you know, nice to see people after years, and you know, it's uh, good that we're all still doing what we love. All right, uh, I have a question. Um, that's not on our list. Uh, who are like, who do you think are like the the more talented uh, bands they've they've seen that are newer. Well, the oh man, that's hard because yeah, it's yeah. hard because I can't. I don't. I you know I'm such a jazz nerd and uh, I go to the orchestra all all the time in L.A. Um, so I don't see that many new bands. But uh, I you know God, ten years ago in New York or no, maybe even longer, fifteen years ago I saw. This is not even. This is an old band, but Radiohead, and I thought they were really good. Um, I love that, uh, Square Garden. Yeah, they were really cool. Um, but I got newer bands. I can't. I sorry. I can't even. Can't even. I know I've seen. Um, seen band. I produced a, two records for a French band called the Rescue Rangers, and I, I like those guys. I'm really proud of that that work that we did. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not very qualified to say because I don't ever go to um, rock clubs anymore, um, unless I have friends that are playing. Um, so it's hard to hard to say. I've heard some, I think there's some amazing players in, in these days. Like, I'm friends with Mastodon, and those guys are great players. Um, I, the Animals as Leaders, those guys are great players. Um, they're not new. I mean, I know they've been around for a while, but those are the, the new, you know, newest, for me, being an old guy, bands that I can think of that I think are really, really good musicians. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I'm not familiar with. You know that I've heard of. Uh, so yeah, that's. All right. Um. Half answer. All right. Um. 
I probably should have asked this question earlier on, like when we started. But like, how much time do you have for the interview? Uh, probably about five more minutes. Yeah, that sounds good. Three, that, that, fits, yeah. that, that fits our time. Yeah, really yeah. Well. yeah. 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 Three thirty. Oh. We should probably be coming to you. Yeah, that sounds good. You, uh, you, are you, are you guys are in Medford, right? Yeah, yep. we are. That's cool, man. That's yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. And my That's, parents. How, how is yeah. it? Up, how is it up there? Is it a uh, place is opening up? Uh, uh a little bit, yeah. Room. It's really nice outside yeah. today. Yeah, it, it's like here is not that much. It's not that bad of quarantine than it is in like L.A. or like Sacramento yeah. or some of the bigger yeah. places. California. Uh, yeah, pr- mm-hmm. pretty much all of California. Yeah. It, there's not that much uh, limitation really, because it's not that big of a, yeah, of yeah, a town. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. My parents have seen a uh, helmet live two times, I think. They, y- oh, they, nice. yeah, they saw you uh, when you performed in downtown. Like there was like a few people there, and you, you talked to them like both the times. You got to hang out with them. Oh, cool. Um, on their oh, third. Was it that, was it that, that outdoor uh, festival thing? Yeah, I think so. Oh, cool! Yeah, that was fun. That was a good. It was actually a really good show. It was a small, small turnout, but we played with great. It felt really good. It was. Uh, that was fun. We just got back from Europe. That's right. And then, and then they oh, saw cool. you. At, they saw you at Howie's for your thirtieth anniversary tour, where you played like forty-five songs. Yeah, that was crazy, man. That was that. That was sold out uh, in advance, and uh, really, really happy with that. that I love Howie's. They're they're. Uh, I heard they closed, yeah. but I'm, I don't. I mean, I know everybody's closed now, but uh, so that's cool. They were at that show. Yeah, that was fun. And they said really that. Fun time. They said that Helmet's one of the loudest bands they've seen. You and Mastodon. Yeah, we hit hard. Yeah. It's part of the, part of the style of the music. Yeah. Yeah. That's um. Cool. <laughs> so I I have a I have a question. What? What would, you, what would you prefer in concerts? Small, like small groups or big groups, like huge groups? Uh, uh you know, the, I I like like I like concerts that are somewhere between two hundred and a thousand, you know, or twelve hundred people. When they get bigger than that, like we played in Brazil the first time, there were a hundred and fifty thousand people on the beach, um, and it just it was that's like like five times the size of Medford you know, and where I grew up, and um, it's, you don't have any contact with the, with the audience, so I, I really don't love the festivals, we play a lot, of, we played festivals last year, um, we were supposed to play a couple this year in June, um, and you, the big concerts are just, it's much less personal, and I like, um, like I said, I like, I like kind of feeling this, like the audience is part of the show, you know. Yeah, you know, hundred fifty thousand people. I I don't think I could wrap my head around <laughs> yeah. that on a on a beach on one beach. One beach in Florianopolis, Brazil. Yeah, it's uh, it's out of that Brazil on the border of Ar- Argentina. Yeah. So there were Argentinians and Brazilians. Yeah, it was, uh, you, as far as you could see, people just it was crazy. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like I, I I'll play a thousand people is great. Like this tour was. The 30th anniversary uh, was great. All the, we sold out the majority of the shows. And, um, in fact, places like in New York and Portland, New York City and Portland, both promoters said they wish they had booked a second show because the shows sold out so fast. So it, it, I would rather play two shows than a, you know, to, like if we're going to play to 1,500 people, we'll have two shows sold out at 750 people then. Um, and you know that that's that's preferable to me. So we we love playing at Dante's in Portland, and we played at the Bowery Ballroom in New York. And um, yeah, we did two shows in New York at the Bowery on the Betty tour, um, but we, we didn't for some reason on this tour. So all right, uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Cool. Uh, you were our first thanks, person on uh, on this podcast. Oh, nice, man. That's yeah. cool. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I appreciate it. You guys, yeah. you guys, uh, good luck with it. You're gonna do well. You did that was a great interview. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Um. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh. Hopefully, quarantine releases and uh. I've I've never been to a helmet concert, but I I feel like once quarantine's gone. Like, if there's another helmet concert, I think I'm going to go to it. Yeah, next time you guys come to Medford. Yeah, well, we'll we're, ta- we're, we're right now starting up um, a plan to, to tour the U.S. again, I think, mm-hmm. in the spring, like maybe May, about a year from now. I mean, maybe May, uh, late spring, early summer. So uh, I, I always try to get Medford on the on the routing. We don't know now if Howie's is closed, we don't, you know, we'll have to find something in the in Southern Oregon, you know, whether it's Medford or Ashland or uh, whatever. Fingers crossed. So, yeah, All right. guys, definitely come, come up and say, hey, say, hey, we interviewed you. Uh, yeah. You know, and, All right. and introduce yourself. All right? All right. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. All right, Gage and Bodie, take care of you guys. Take care. Yeah, you too. Okay, have All a right. great day. See ya. Yeah. You too. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right. Cool. Yeah, that one. That one. Well, guys. Um. Anyways, uh, that was our first episode of Musical Underground. Underworld. Um, Musical Underworld. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm still getting used to that. I'm still getting used to that. Yeah. I'm not cutting that out. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for watching. And Paige, if you're watching this, thank you for being the first person that we interviewed. It's really crazy how like our first interview is the helmet well it's not helmet it's well it's 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 it's, it's, <laughs> it's the main guy from helmet Paige hamilton well, yeah sort of the main the the singer the the only like, original member y- you know the only original member yeah only okay? original member you know like when you interview like people, I, I feel like no one's the main person yeah. in a band <laughs> yeah, like true uh, except for like maybe except for maybe maybe the Singer of Ghosts, like he, because, because, yeah. or you know, like Cedric and Omar from Mars Volta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Yeah, um, thanks for watching. W- we'll see you next time. Hopefully, we have uh, another interview right. in about a week. Bye. Yeah. Wait, did you push record? Oh, no. <laughs>